Hello everyone, Arash Jafarzadeh here and today we're going to learn how to create your very own website completely from scratch. That means no website builders or WYSIWYG interfaces where you can just drag and drop things to create your web pages. Nope. We're going to be scripting and coding away in this lesson and learn all about HTML, CSS, and maybe even a little bit of JavaScript as we progress. Now you might be asking yourself, why is this important? I mean, can't I just use a template and add content from there? Well, if you know anything about me, I like to teach things from the ground up. That means before you start using your calculator to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, I want you to be able to perform your calculations by hand and understand the concepts first. In our case, I want you to understand how HTML, CSS, and JavaScript work together and what's really going on when you open a web page. After that, feel free to use all the tools and templates you want. Just don't break any copyright laws. Now, this lesson is designed to go hand in hand with my classroom lessons. So if you're jumping in here, you missed my presentation on the World Wide Web and how all this stuff works. I'm planning on making a video in the future that will help you build an even stronger foundation which will cover all that stuff. But for now, let's just dive in and create our website. Now, there's a few things we're going to need to do to get started. First, if you're a Mac user, you may have to look this part up, uh, but Windows users, you can follow along. Basically, what we want to do is be able to see the file extensions on your files to help us out here. So, for example, I have a text document here, I have a website document here, an HTML file, this is an Excel file, um, but they don't have the extensions. And if you're an old school you know, computer user, you would remember they used to have a dot followed by three letters, like dot .xls was an Excel document, or dot .jpg was a image. Um, so we want to be able to see that to help us out and avoid mistakes and problems. So to do that, I'm going to head over to start and I'm just going to do a quick search for folder. Now this is actually located in your control panel, but this is the fastest way to get to it. I'm going to click on folder options. And in here, I'm going to head over to the view tab and you're going to notice an option that says hide extensions for known file types. We're going to uncheck this and what's going to happen once I click OK, is we can see the file extensions once again. Just be caref careful when you're renaming your files because if you don't put the dot, you know, XLSX in this case, this won't open with Excel anymore. So that Excel, that, that extension is very important and you don't want to mess with it unless you have a reason to. So we have that. The second thing we're going to need is a text editor. Now a text editor just allows us to input text into uh, our, our document. There's no extra formatting or anything like that. When you create a document in Word, for example, your Word document has formatting like what fonts you used or what colors you used, you know, margins, things like that. But a text document is just plain old text and nothing more and nothing less. Now, if you're a Windows user, you already have one. It's called Notepad. And you can use this program to create your web page today, but it's not as friendly as it could be. There's another program called Notepad++, and the nice thing about that is that it actually helps us see our changes as we go. It actually shows, uh, it colors the, the um, I haven't explained this yet, but it actually colors some of the reserved words that mean, you know, mean something to the, to the uh, browser so that it's easier for us to format and it has some tools to make it easy for us to see what we're actually doing. So we're not going to use this. You can, but we're not. We're going to actually download Notepad++ and the quickest way to get to it is to visit my website. I actually created a resource page for this lesson. So I'm going to open up my web browser and you can visit arashthearcher.org and once you're here head over to the link that says resources and tutorials and these are just some links to some classes that I'm working with but we're going to head over to website tutorial and here is everything you need to create your web page today or your website today. So first, uh, you'll notice I have a link to Notepad++. You can also Google this. Uh, hopefully this link is current when you use uh, my site. But if not, just do a Google search for Notepad++. 
Uh, if you're a Mac user, you can use Text Wrangler, and there are some other ones out there, but these are the kind of two programs that I've used and, and I've been happy with. So I'm going to head over to Notepad++. You'll see a page like this. It'll give you the link to the current version. Download that, install it, and open it up. I've already done that, so I'm just going to close this tab since I don't need it for now. And the last thing we need to do is set things up for our website. So I'm going to create this website on my desktop. Keep track of where you're creating everything. You need your web page to be in one location. So I'm going to start off by right clicking on my desktop and going to new and I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just going to call this website. And this will be my website's root directory. So all of my web pages, images, everything will be in here. So let's open it up. And right now there's nothing in there, of course. It's completely empty. So we're going to add some other directories in here to help us stay organized. And the first one I'm going to create, I'll create a new folder and I'll call this images. So I'll have one location where I put in my images. Now quick note, while you're making your directories, make sure that you don't have any spaces in your file or directory names. What this means is, let's say for example I wanted to create a directory called, I don't know, um, my pages. I would not write my space pages like this. It'll cause problems for you. You want to make sure that it's all one word. You put it no space or you can put a dash there. The other tip I have for you is once we start making links and uh, references to different pages, uh, everything's going to be case sensitive. So I would recommend just leaving all of your file names and folders lowercase letters so that way you don't think back like, oh, was that, did I capitalize my I or did I not? You know, it's going to save you headache later. So all lowercase letters and definitely no spaces in your file names and directories. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and name this folder Pages. So I have two folders here. I have Images and I have Pages. The other thing I'm going to want to do is download some of the resource files to complete this uh, lesson. So I'm going to head back to Arash the Archer and here we're going to download these two images. One of them is just a picture of a dog, and you're, you know, feel free to use your own image, but if you want to follow along with this lesson, use a dog. And this is a background uh, image that we're going to use to tile a, a special background, kind of like the one you see here. So I'm going to click here. It opens the image, a cute dog. I'm going to right-click this, save image as, and then navigate to the folder I just created, which was called Website, and we'll save it inside the Images folder. Now here is trying to call a dog one. That's because I had saved it earlier. So I'm just going to write dog.jpg. Uh, again, if you add the .jpg here at the end, make sure that you have followed that first step so that it shows you the file extensions. Otherwise, the computer might call it dog.jpg.jpg and you won't even realize it. Okay, so this is called dog.jpg. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back to my tutorial here and uh, download the circle background, which looks like... Oh, well, you can't see it, but it's here. Um, it has a transparent background with white little circles. Uh, it's definitely there. See, I just dragged it. It's there. But uh, you can't see it. So you have two choices. You can right-click it and save image here, or you can go back here, right-click on the uh, link, and uh, save the link as. So either way is fine. I'm just going to right-click and save it here. Save image as, circles.png. Um, the other picture doesn't show up here because it's only showing me PNG images and not the JPG ones. So circles.png, I'm website images folder. Everything is there. Save that. And let's minimize that for now. And if we go back in our images folder now, we see we have circles and we have dog. So both the images are there. I'm ready to go. Uh, I also have a pages folder which is currently empty and while we're here we might as well make one more. Click on new folder one more time and call this folder CSS. Now I'm being overly, uh, uh, I'm creating too many folders basically and uh, you normally wouldn't need to be this, you know, you don't have to create this many folders but I'm doing it because I want you to learn how to navigate from one folder to another as you progress through, the, through this lesson. So enough talk, let's get to it. 
So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. We might need it later. And I'm going to open Notepad++ up. So here's Notepad++. I'm going to head over to File, New, and create a new document. Now, in this case, I don't need to. I already have one up, so we don't need to do that. You can also create a new document from here, or press Control n on your keyboard. So, to start out, we're going to type in bracket, exclamation point, doc type, HTML. And this is just something you type at the uh, beginning of your document for HTML5, HTML documents, which is what we're coding in today. Now, moving forward, you're going to notice that everything is going to be is going to have a bracket at the beginning and end of it. You're going to see a lot of these. And these basically uh, are telling the web browser directions. These are called tags. And the first tag that we're going to create beyond, besides this one is called the HTML tag. So I'm just going to type in bracket HTML bracket. And then I'm going to press enter twice. And next, I'm going to type in bracket slash HTML. The reason I typed this second HTML here with a slash ahead of it is that I'm telling my web browser that the HTML document is done. No more. We're finished. So you always have a start tag and then an end tag or a stop tag. And then between this is going to be my HTML document. So I'm going to indent in here and type in bracket head bracket, which is the next tag we're going to need. I'll press enter twice and type in bracket slash head bracket and in here we type in the heading or the header information um, generally the information that we put in here is things that the user is not necessarily going to see but it helps us set up our document so for example inside the head I want to tell the web browser what uh, char set we're using what kind of uh, keyboard keys we're using so I'm going to type in here bracket meta and this is a metadata tag and I won't go into too much detail about the meanings behind these things because then our tutorial gets too long. I'm going to write char set equals quotation mark UTF-8 and I'm going to close the quotation mark and close the angle bracket there. Now a meta tag is a special tag and it does not have an end tag so we're not going to write bracket slash meta. The other thing I want you to notice is after meta I create a, a, a space and it added extra information which says char set UTF-8. This would be an attribute of the meta tag and you're going to see us do that a few times. If I wanted to add attributes for the head, uh, head tag I would have made a space and then typed in my att attributes here. But of course we don't have any attributes for it so we're just going to leave it alone. On the next line I'm going to type in a, um, let's make a comment. So I'll type in bracket exclamation point dash dash and say uh, this page was created by Arash Jafarzadeh. And put a period there, dash dash bracket. So I'm going to stop for a second. So far, our page really doesn't do anything at all. It's just if we load it, you're not going to see anything happen. Uh, all we've done is we've told it to that we're going to be using this, this character set. And then over here, we just made a comment, which the user is not going to see. It's just a comment that we leave for ourselves. Maybe we want to add some notes or whatever it is. So let's save this, and I want you to see what's going to happen. I'm going to go to File, Save As. I'm going to head over to my desktop and navigate to that folder we created. Somewhere in here. Looks like I lost it. Let me just type it in. Website. And here we have our <coughs> folders. CSS, images, and pages. I'm going to ask you not to save in any of the folders. We're going to save it inside the website folder. And I'm going to name this file index. I-N-D-E-X. And the type is going to be hypertext markup language. So I have an index.html file, hypertext markup language, and it's inside the website folder. The reason we call it index is your home page is always going to be called index. When you go to www.whateversite.com, you know, typically the way it's set up 
is that there's an index page and that web page opens automatically. You don't have to type in www.whatever.com slash index.html. The web browser knows to open that on its own. So we have index.html, which is our home page, and I'm saving inside website. Let's save it. Notice that things get color coded. Now, Notepad++ is doing this for us. When I save this file, this color information is not saved with it. Notepad is just presenting it to us this way to make it easy on our eyes and our brains. The last thing we're going to type in the head tag is the title. So I'm going to type in bracket, title, bracket, and here I'm going to give it a title. So for now, I'll say, welcome to my page. And here we're going to put an end tag as well. Let's go to the end here and type in bracket slash title bracket. Let's save this and see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and go to File Save. And I can run it in one of two ways. I can go to my desktop folder and double click on it to open it in a web browser here. Or I can go to Run and ask it to launch it in Chrome or whatever browser you're using. So I'm going to click Launch in Chrome. And let's take a look and see what we got. Here's the web page. Here's the uh, funky address because it's stored locally on my computer. We have nothing here, but if you pay attention, if you look closely, it says, Welcome to my page. The title showed up right over there. Pretty awesome. I'm going to leave this open and go back to my notepad document. And here, we're going to go to the end of the uh, head, press Enter a few times, and create a tag called body. The body is where all of the information goes that the user sees. So bracket, body, bracket. Press enter a few times, bracket, slash body. So the body starts here and ends here. Now we're going to head over in between the two tags and we're going to indent. Now the reason we're indenting like this is to keep things organized. It's very clear that inside the HTML tags we have head and we have body. Inside the head tag, we also have these other tags. So it's clear what is going where. So stay as organized as possible. We're going to go ahead and create a heading tag. I'm going to type in bracket, H1, bracket. H1 means heading level 1. And that's the largest heading you can have. If you use heading 2, it's slightly smaller. 3, smaller still. The lowest number you can use is a heading level 6. And it doesn't get any smaller than that. So let's type in H1, and we're going to say uh, welcome. And let's create a website about an animal. So I already had an image of a dog. So welcome to our page. And this is a title. So I guess welcome to uh, the dog page. That's fine. Silly there. But that'll work. Slash H1 bracket. Now if I save this and head back to our web browser and I refresh it, it says welcome to the dog page. And you'll notice that I had to save it here and refresh it here. So let's go back. Let's give the web browser some more instructions. I'm going to press enter and let's make a paragraph. I'll type in bracket p bracket and type in some text some text. And then we'll put bracket slash p bracket. And let's save that and see what happens. Go back to our browser here. Refresh the page. There it is, some text. So as we go, we have to save it here and refresh our page here. So uh, let's add a few paragraphs to make it look nicer. And I'm going to head over to lipsum.com to just grab some random text. So I'm going to go back to that web browser here, create a new tab, and go to www.lipsum.com. And we'll make maybe a three-paragraph website. Three paragraphs, generate. And I'm just going to copy this text over. Right-click and copy. Go over here. I'm going to actually erase this some text that we wrote. 
and actually erase this bracket slash p. So I have bracket p bracket, and I'm going to press control v, or you can go to edit and paste. And it added the, uh, the uh, text there for me. Notice that it's one really long line uh, for the paragraph. So I'm going to head over to the end of that and put a bracket slash p bracket. And we're going to do the same thing for the other ones as well. Let's go back to the beginning. I'm going to indent this so it's lined up with the uh, other paragraphs. Put bracket p bracket. Let's do this one while we're here. Bracket p bracket. And then we're going to go to the end. Put a bracket slash p bracket. And here as well. Oops. There we go. And bracket slash p at the end of that. So you have three paragraphs, each end with a bracket slash p at the end of them, and they begin with a bracket p. Let's save it and take a look. Switch back to our browser, go back to our page, refresh it. We actually have some words show up here. Now I should mention something. No matter how many times I press enter and I save it, if I go back to my web page, nothing will change. Let's refresh it. See? It looks exactly the same. Even though I pressed enter after that uh, second sentence, it didn't show up on the web page at all. The reason is, if you wanted to make these spaces, you have to ask it to by creating a tag, like we made paragraphs here. Let's put that back the way it was. So, let's make, um, let's add an image to our, our web page here. So I'm going to add the image right below Welcome to the Dog page. I'm just going to press Enter here. I don't have to. I mean, I can add the image right here. It would work just fine. But uh, just to keep things organized, I'm going to add the image right at this point. So I'm going to type in bracket IMG. That's the image tag. And the image tag is going to have some attributes, right? We have to tell it where this image is and maybe even specify the size. So I'm going to type in IMG space, and the attribute is SRC. That's the source of the image. Equals, and then we're going to put a quotation mark and type in the location of our image. I can write the web address, or in our case, because the image is saved in our own directory, we can type that right here. So currently, think about where this document is saved. It's in saved inside the website document, the folder, the root directory of our website. And I want it to go inside images and find this dog picture and display it. So I have to kind of draw it a path of where it needs to go, or type it, I should say. So we're just going to type in images slash dog dot jpg and you have to include the dot jpg for it to work put a close quotation mark and a close angle bracket the image tag is special it does not need a stop or an end tag so we don't need to put slash image all right let's see what happens i'm going to save it and then head over to my website or web page and refresh it and there's the dog now we have a big problem the dog picture is way, way too big, and I want it to be smaller. You can do that outside of the web browser on your own, or you can specify it in your attributes. So I'm just going to add an attribute. We'll type in the width equals. And for the width, I'm going to type in, let's say, um, 300. And that's 300 pixels when I type that in. I could do the height as well. But if I just type in the width, it'll resize it and maintain the correct proportions. If I type in the height, if I specify the height, then it could mess up those proportions and make it too wide or too narrow. So let's go ahead and save this and go back to our web page and refresh it and see what happens. You can see our dog picture is now smaller. Now eventually we're going to learn how to wrap this around it, but that's going to need some CSS. So we'll just leave it as it is for now. We can also create a link. Let's say I want to create a link to Google. So I'm going to go to the end of this line here and press enter a few times. 
And I'm just pressing enter a few times again just to create some space for myself. And here I'm going to type in bracket A. A is for anchor and it's the way you create a link to or a hyperlink to another location on the web. So I'm going to type in A. We're going to type in as an attribute H ref equals quotation mark and the name of the address I want it to go to. So in this case I would type in HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com and the quotation mark and the angle bracket. Now we're not done yet. I have to tell the web browser what I want the user to click on to go to google.com. So maybe I'll just say click me and then after that I'll put a bracket slash a bracket. And that's the basic structure. A, href and the location you want it to go to in quotation marks. Then after the angle bracket type the words you want it to say and then put a bracket slash a bracket. So if I save this, I go back to my web browser and refresh the page, take a look at what we have at the bottom. Click me. If I click it, it takes us to google.com. Let's go back. If I wanted to add some text around it, like here is a cool space, and then here instead of click me, link, and then after that, make a space, uh, actually a uh, cool link, exclamation point, and we save this, let's see what happens now. Let's go back to our web uh, page, refresh it, click here for a cool link, and just link is the link now. Pretty cool. So there we go. We have the basics of a web page. Now let's say I want to create some navigation. I want it to go from one page to another. To do that, you need to uh, create some more hyperlinks and we're also going to be copying this code to our other pages. Now I'm going to create the links as a list. A uh, list is what you've seen in Microsoft Word, right? You have bullet list or you have a numbered list. Well, in our case, we're going to create a bulleted list and it's going to have a link uh, to the different pages on our website. And later on, I'll show you how to create a menu out of that. So let's go to the top of our body tag and I'm going to press enter here. And here I'm going to indent and type in bracket UL bracket and UL is an unordered list, the one with bullets. You can also create an OL. OL would make an ordered list and I'll show you an example of that in a minute. So type in bracket UL bracket, enter twice, bracket slash UL bracket, go up to the center, indent, and each of the items on our list is going to be a list item. And to create a list item, you type in bracket slash LI bracket, excuse me, jumping ahead there, bracket li bracket and then I type in bracket slash li bracket and between these two tags I would write in the name or the name of the list item so for example I can say home page and save it there now if I go and press enter after that and make another list item bracket li bracket bracket slash li bracket and go between them I can type in, let's say, um, it's about dogs, right? So I'll say uh, diet. Now I have another item. Let's make another one. Bracket, li bracket, behavior. Beha behavior. Bracket slash li bracket. Now it says it's misspelled, of course. This is probably from England or something. Bracket, li bracket. And we're going to type in... Um, Let's see, habitat, habitat, bracket slash li bracket. Now let's save this and see what we're going to see on our web page. I pressed control S that time. Let's go to our web page and refresh it. You see, we now have a list at the beginning of our web page. If I wanted it to be an ordered list, I could have typed in OL. and saved it there. Go back and refresh our page once again. I 
press control R to refresh it there and you can see it's ordered list now there's numbers instead of bullets so we're gonna go ahead and leave it as an unordered list so we'll leave it as UL oops there we go and then UL here UL So you're going to end up with a page that looks like this for now. Now let's say I want each of these to be a link to another page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this entire page and copy it by going to edit and clicking copy or pressing control C on your keyboard or right clicking and saying copy. Any of those are fine. I'm going to create three other pages. So I'm going to go to file new paste the information here, change the title to say the diet of dogs and we'll say diet page here instead of welcome and uh, maybe this page won't have an image so I'll just erase that image there and that's it so this is going to be my diet page notice that nothing's colored anymore but once I save it as a hypertext markup language document uh, it's going to color it again. Now we're going to name this page since we called it um, diet here I'm going to call it diet.html and I'm going to save it in my pages directory. I could save it out here but for practice we're going to save it in the pages directory it's called diet.html everything's lowercase no spaces click save and now everything's color coded once again. You can see the file name up at the top. Now that we've done that, I'm going to do the same thing for the other two remaining pages. File new, paste it. This one can be habitat. Here we go. Dog habitat. And we're going to erase the image here and here instead of welcome to the dog heading we're going to type in um, the habitats of dogs and save this once again file save as and we're already in the pages directory great let's we'll call this habitat all lowercase letters and we're going to change the type to html habitat.html, check your spelling, save that. I'm going to do one more, file new, paste it, and this one's going to be called behavior. Dog behavior. And the behavior of dogs. And I'll just remove this image once again. And save this. Behavior and hypertext markup language. All right. So it looks like all of our pages are here. Now I want to make these link to each other. So let's start with the index page. Well, home page doesn't need to be a link because I don't need it to go to itself. So that'll just stay the way it is. The diet page does need to be a link. So instead of just diet by itself, I'm going to type in some extra information ahead of it. Bracket A space href equals quotation mark. And then I have to write the path I want it to take to get to the diet.html page. Well, currently we're in the root directory. So I needed to go to the pages folder slash diet dot html quotation mark angle bracket then I'm going to go to the end of the word diet with the capital D because that's what they're going to click on type in bracket slash a bracket and if I save this and I go back to that index page let's see what happens let's refresh it you can see diet is now a web page and if I click it it took us to the diet page it works let's go back and do the same thing for behavior and habitat so I'm gonna to go to behavior 
bracket a href equals quotation mark pages slash behavior dot html quotation mark angle bracket then we're going to go to the end of behavior and type in bracket slash a bracket and we'll do the same thing for habitat a href equals quotation mark pages slash behavior oh I'm copying above habitat dot html quotation mark angle bracket and then bracket slash a bracket now if we save it and head over to our web page and refresh it now all of them are links except for home page because we're currently on the home page so if I click on behavior we go to behavior I go to habitat go to habitat but now I can't once I go to one of these pages I can't click these links anymore because they're not links so let's go update those pages now I'm kinda doing this the longer way because I want you to understand what's going on and why we're doing it so I'm gonna head over to diet HTML the home page is going to be a link now I do want to be able to go to the home page from the diet page so this one's a little different so pay close attention bracket a href once again equals quotation mark I'm gonna add another quotation mark and an angle bracket and we're gonna type the link in between the quotation marks so so far nothing is different but we do have to type in a different link because right now the diet page is inside the pages directory and I can't say go to index because there is no index in here I need it to go back or out one folder go back one folder and then find index.html so to do that you have to add a dot dot slash and type in index.html and what the dot dot slash tells it to do is go back one folder and then find index.html at the end of home page type in bracket slash a bracket to stop or end the anchor tag diet is not going to be a page we'll leave that alone or a link I mean and we're going to go to behavior again a little different than the home page bracket a href equals quotation mark and this time we don't have to write pages slash behavior because we're in the pages directory so I just type in the file name behavior dot html quotation mark angle bracket and we go to the end of behavior bracket slash a bracket and if you notice when I save it uh, here we're inside the diet page is inside the pages folder so it just needs to go and find the behavior page in the same location the same thing for habitat bracket a href equals quotation mark habitat dot html quotation mark bracket and then bracket slash a bracket and we're just going to do this for all the other pages now again I could have copy pasted and done all that yes but I just want to let you guys practice a little so I'm going to go to habitat now and make sure you save it I, I've been pressing control s force a habit uh, here for the home page bracket a href equals quotation mark dot dot slash index dot html quotation mark bracket bracket slash a bracket diet is a link this time bracket a href equals quotation mark diet dot html quotation mark bracket bracket slash a bracket we are currently on the habitat page, so behavior is going to be a link also. Bracket a href equals quotation mark behavior.html quotation mark bracket bracket slash a bracket. And habitat will leave alone. Save this. One more page to go. Hopefully I'm not making any mistakes, but if I do, we'll know. Uh, so the home page, bracket a href equals quotation mark dot dot slash index dot html and bracket slash a bracket diet equals quotation mark diet dot html 
Again, I could be copying and pasting because it's the same exact thing on so from one page to another. But in our case, we want to get some practice. We are on the behavior page, so we don't need to make that into a link. We're going to straight to habitat. Habitat.html, angle bracket, bracket slash a bracket. Now you want, might want to go back and check to make sure you didn't make any mistakes, but hopefully it all works. Let's go to our website and see what happened. So I'm just going to go back to our home page here. Okay, here's the home page. Everything looks good. I'm going to click on diet. And I can go to the different pages from wherever I am. And when I'm on the diet page, I can't click on diet. When I'm on the behavior page, it's no longer a link. So there you go. I mean, you've already created a very basic site uh, with just some of the uh, basic uh, tags that we've gone over here. So now, let's say we want to make our website look beautiful. I want it to have some color, maybe a background color, things like that. So to do that, we're going to need something called a cascading style sheet or CSS. And here's how it works. Let's pretend that I wanted to set up a background color for each of these pages. And let's say instead of four pages, I had a hundred. And I set my background color here to be blue. And I do that for all the pages. And then my boss comes and tells me, you know what? I don't like blue. I want it to be green. Now you have to go reopen all the pages, change all of the files, all the, uh, uh, the uh, background image colors to green, and save them and close them. And that takes a long time. So what we can do is tell all of our pages to look to one location to find out what color it should be. And that's where a cascading style sheet comes into play. A cascading style sheet is responsible for the look of your site. So let's go to File, New once again. And right off the bat, let's go ahead and just save this as a CSS document. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. And here, we're going to go out of the Pages folder. Let's go back one directory and save this CSS file in the CSS folder. I didn't have to do this. I could have just saved it in the root directory. But I just want you to get used to navigating with uh, your text when you're typing your, your HTML. Okay, so we're in the CSS folder. I'm going to call it My Style. And this type is going to be CSS, or Cascading Style Sheet. And it should be right over here. Now, if you're using some text editors, you may have to just type in the .css at the end, and that'll work just fine. Just make sure it says My Style .css. All right, CSS directory, everything looks good. Let's save it. Now, the language I'm about to teach you is no longer HTML. We are not learning HTML anymore. We are now learning a new language called CSS. And it's a different type of syntax and uh, it's structured slightly differently. So, the way it's going to work is this let's say I want to create a color for the body of my web page. So what I would type in is the name of the tag, which is body. Then I'm going to create an open curly bracket and a closed curly bracket. Sometimes I'll create a curly bracket like this, where you have the beginning and the end here and here, and you type in the instructions for the body. Or it might be like this. This is the way I do it just because I'm used to coding in some other languages, and I've just gotten used to doing it. Uh, you're fine either way, but most times you'll see it like this. I'm going to leave it here just because the way I'm used to doing things. But you feel free to do it the way you're comfortable with. So, body, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And in between, I'm going to write the instructions for all the body pages. So let's start off with something basic. I want to type in the background color. So I'll type in background dash color. And we're not going to put an equal sign. We're going to put a colon. And then we're going to type the color we want it to be. Well, how do you find out what color? You could write blue or green. But if you want to specify the color, head over to your web browser. You can also do this in Photoshop. 
and do a quick Google search for hex hexadecimal colors or just hex colors. And here you'll get some links. Um, I'm just going to go to this W3 Schools one. And here, each of these colors has a different color code, as you can see right here. So let's say I want to choose this uh, light blue, CCCCFF, six uh, words or a combination of words and colors, uh, or not words, a combination of letters and colors to cr make up this color here. So I'm going to go back to my code, type in hashtag CCCC, it's not case sensitive, it could be uppercase or lowercase, and FF, semicolon. The semicolon is not necessary um, if it's the last item in the body section, but I'm just going to put it there. So we're just going to put uh, go to File, Save. And now what we need to do is tell these pages to link to this page. To do that, we're going to go to the index first. Inside the head tag, I'm going to press Enter just before it ends. It could go in between any of these tags you've already typed. And here I'm just going to type in bracket link, because it's linking to another page, space, R-E-L. The R-E-L attribute means the relationship. And the relationship that it has is style sheet. That's going to go in quotation marks, style sheet. Oh, and I forgot the equal sign there. There we go. So R-E-L equals style sheet space, and then the location of the style sheet. So we're going to type in href, that looks familiar, equals quotation mark, and currently we're in the index page, which means we're in the root directory, so it has to go inside CSS, the CSS folder, slash mystyle.css, which is what we named it. Quotation mark, angle bracket. And we're going to save this, and repeat for the other three pages. Go to diet, bracket link, rel equals quotation mark, style sheet, dots, uh, excuse me, quotation mark, and then href equals quotation mark, my style dot css, quotation mark, and angle bracket. Now this won't work. And the reason it won't work is the way it's typed right now, it's going to try to find my style inside the pages folder, but we know it's not there. It's in the CSS folder. And if you look at it from the browser's perspective, right now it's in the pages folder. We want to tell it to go back one folder and then go into the CSS folder. So to do that, we're going to add in dot dot slash and then CSS slash mystyle.css. So we tell it, go back one folder, find the folder called CSS, and then find the file called mystyle.css. We're going to go ahead and copy this line because it's exactly the same for the others. So I'm just going to right click and copy, and of course we're going to save that page, make sure it's saved, and paste it in the same location for the other pages. So now on each of my pages, I have that link to the CSS page here and here. And the index page is slightly different. It doesn't have to go back one folder. It just goes right into the CSS folder. So let's see what happened. Let's go back to our website here, dog behavior. I'm going to refresh any of the pages. And now I have this blue background on all of the pages. And if I update the color, here, let's say I want it to be a lighter shade of blue. Let's say I want it to be this shade or some other shade. Let's actually use this one. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think this looks good. Let's use this one. So I'll just copy this and go back. Save it. Let's see what happens. You can see it's a lighter shade of blue. And not only that, but all the pages got updated. They're all that lighter shade of blue now. 
So you just make the change to the look of your page in one location. It's very convenient. Now let's say we want to make a repeating background. Now if you take uh, some of my Photoshop classes, you'll know how to make your own pattern. There's plenty online if you, if you uh, look around. I'm sure there's some that are copyright free. Uh, but we're gonna, you can use mine for your web page. So I'm going to press enter here. And we're going to type in bracket. <laughs> what am I saying? I'm jumping back to HTML. What I meant to say is background dash image. And you can see that it highlights it to help me. So I can just press enter on that once it highlights it. Colon. And this one's a little bit different. We're going to type in URL, open parentheses, and then make a quotation or a uh, apostrophe there. And uh, here we're going to type in the location of that image. So we're inside the CSS folder. We're going to tell it to go back one folder, dot, dot, slash, and find the images folder. And then find circles, dot, PNG. Now, what I did with that, I'm going to end the uh, little quote there and then put a close parenthesis and a semicolon. What I did when I saved that image, image of the circles is I saved it as a PNG with a transparent background. Remember, that's why we couldn't see it. It was a white set of circles with different uh, levels of opacity and it was over a transparent background so we couldn't see those white circles. But now it's going to be over this blue background so we should act oops actually open illustrator there um, we should be able to see the circles uh, right here so let's see there they are and the cool thing is when you have an image with a transparent background if I change this color let's say I change it back to that other color it was at C C C C F F and I refresh my page see it's that darker shade of blue now and it's the same for all the other pages. Isn't that awesome? So that's the basics of it. You've already learned some CSS. You've learned HTML and their relationship with each other. So let's continue on and make our web page look really cool. The next thing I want to do is um, add some padding to uh, the body. Right now, when I run my page, as you can see, the text goes right to the edge. And I want to give it some space. So let's go over ahead and add another rule for it. I'm going to add in padding dash left. And put a colon. And we type in the width. Now I'm going to type the width in something called an EM. An EM is the width of a capital letter M. So for example, if I type in 5EM, the web browser is going to make the space of five capital letter M's at the font size that we chose. So check it out. I'm going to save this, go back to our web page, refresh it, and you can see that it moved everything in added padding on the left side and it's the width of the letter M times 5 at this current font. But then, wait a minute, how do I change the font on my web page? Well, very simple. We're going to type in font-family. <clears throat> and this is going to allow us to change the font. We're going to put a colon I'm going to choose a serif font, which is the ones with the little squiggly on the ends of them. So we'll type in maybe uh, quotation mark times new Roman, quotation mark, comma. And in case that computer that they're using doesn't have times new Roman, they can use maybe times. Now notice that times is not in quotation marks. It doesn't have to be. You could, but it doesn't have to be. Because Times New Roman had three words in it, I had to put it in quotation marks. But Times is just a single word, so it doesn't need any quotation marks. And let's say they don't have either of those fonts. If they don't have either of those fonts, I'm going to ask the web browser to find any serif font. So I'm just going to type in serif. And then that's it. Put a semicolon at the end of that. 
So a serif font are the fonts that have little squigglies, like the T here has a little squiggly at the end of it. Arial is an example of a sans serif font where it doesn't have that. It's just a simple font. All right. So now let's save our page. And by default, our website may already have a serif font. So you might not notice a big difference. In fact, this might be Times New Roman that it chose on its own. But let's take a look. No, it was already Times New Roman. So it did that by default. Uh, let's do another font. Let's type in, let's see here. Let's see if this computer has Georgia. G-E, Georgia. So Georgia is another serif font. I'm going to save that and take a look. Slightly different. So let's head on down, add some padding on the right side. Padding dash right colon, and we'll type in 5EM there as well. See what that does. Go back to our page, refresh it. Now there's padding on the left and the right. Let's head over and work on some other sections of our CSS. Let's say I want the headings to be a different font as well. So I'm going to head over to my style again and outside of these curly brackets I'm going to type in bracket <laughs> sorry I keep jumping back and forth to HTML. Um, I'm going to type in h1 which is the name of our heading tag enter open curly bracket close curly bracket and in between we're going to type in font dash family and this time let's choose a sans serif font. We'll type in uh, Geneva. And if they don't have that, maybe it can use Helvetica. If they don't have that, it can use Arial. If they don't have that, just use any old sans dash serif. And what that'll do, save that, refresh our page here. Now you can see that Welcome to the Dogs page is also a sans serif font. Let's do the same thing for the links. I'm going to go ahead and type in UL, op oop, open curly bracket, skip a line, close curly bracket and highlight this because we're going to use the same exact directions for it. Indent it there. Save that. Go back to our web page. And now the fonts are sans serif as well. So th the thing is this menu structure looks really ugly the way it is. Let's make it on the side here. So I'm going to have it take away the bullets, maybe add a background color to it and move it to the side. So let's make some space for it first. So padding left is 5 EM. I'm going to switch that up to 15 EM instead to make some more space. So we have more space here for our little menu that's going to go on the side. The other thing I want to do is I want to add a uh, navigation bar for our uh, UL tag here. So I'm going to press enter here and we're going to type in ul dot navbar open curly bracket skip a line close curly bracket now what I'm doing right now by typing this dot navbar is I'm creating a new class and if you've taken my programming class, you already know about classes and what their basic idea is. But essentially, um, we're going to be creating a set of rules for our navbar. And this is a name that I made up, navbar. And then what we're going to do is we're going to head back to our index page here. And inside our index page, we're going to head over to the UL tag. And instead of just UL by itself, now it's going to say UL space class equals navbar. 
And what this is going to do is tell it to use the information that we create in here. We're setting up some rules for the the um, for our navigation menu. Okay, so once we've done that, we're going to head over to the UL nav bar in Dent and type in some rules for our navigation bar. For example, I'm going to type in list dash style dash type colon none. Now there's some different styles. I'm not going to cover them in this lesson. There's some different styles you can use here. We're just going to say none for that. I'm also going to type in the position. The position is going to be absolute. And then we're going to create some space. I'll type in top colon 2EM. And that's going to create some space at the top of our navigation bar. And we're going to type in left colon 1EM. And the width is going to be 9EM. So we're going to see what this does in just a second here. It's kind of incomplete, so it might not quite work, but it might give you somewhat of an idea. So the top and the left are going to have some spacing. 2EM for the top, 1EM for the left, and the width is going to be 9EM. That's, that's the total width for our nav bar. So let's take a look and see what happens here when we look at our page. Let's save this first. So now you see that it took our navigation menu and put it on the left side. We have plenty of space on the left and the right. Looks good. And uh, now we're going to add some more information. Let's continue on. I'm going to create another class. This time it's going to be for our list items. So I'm going to type in ul dot navbar once again. But this time I'm going to make a space and type in li. And what this is going to do is it's going to make the rules for the list item for our nav bar. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. And in here, we're going to type in the background color. So the background is going to be white. We're going to type in the margins, which is a space outside of the padding. So you have your padding, your image has the padding. Actually, I can show you this as an example. We have our image here. There's some padding around the image and on the outside of the padding there are the margins. So right now we're typing in the margins. So the margin is going to be point, let's say 0 0.5 EM 0 and the padding is going to be colon 0.3 EM. And then last but not least, we're going to type in border dash right colon 1 EM and it's going to be a solid black border. Let's see what this does. And now you see we have this really cool looking navigation menu where we have these white bars and we have a little black line that goes along the side, the border right. If I had said border left, it would have created the border on the left. Now, over here, I forgot to mention, uh, we have two numbers listed here. One is uh, 0 0.5 and the other one is 0. Uh, think of it this way. Um, the first number is the margin um, that is separating our text. Uh, let's see if I refresh it here for you. It separates the lines one after another like that. And then the second number is going to affect the width. So for now, I just left it at 0. Let's go ahead and continue on and uh, let's type in uh, color for our link. 
So I can type in a colon link, open curly bracket, skip a line, close curly bracket. And what this is going to do is uh, going to create the directions for our links in the website. So let's go ahead and head over here and choose our color that we want to use. Let's say I want my links. Let's see what would look good here. Um, maybe we can make the links this dark purple. Looks pretty cool. I use this. So six six zero zero six six. Here I'm just going to type in color colon hashtag six six zero zero six six and save that. And let's see if it worked here. Yep, they're all purple now. Now, there is one more thing that would make our page look really awesome. And that is if I could make this dog go maybe on the right and have the text wrap around him. And again, we can use CSS to help us with that. Here, I'm going to go ahead and go to the end and type in img. Dot text wrap that's all lowercase letters and actually I should mention I usually capitalize my classes I forgot to do it here so I'll just leave them all lowercase but uh, dot text wrap open curly bracket skip a line close curly bracket and here we're going to type in float colon write so that means it's going to be on the right side of the page. And we're also going to type in the margin. Margin, colon, and maybe we'll make it mm, 3, 2 EM should be enough, 2 EM. And you can type in, in fact, you know, I can type in pixels if I want to. Let's say 10 pixels, PX. This is fine too. Let's save this and go see what happens. Oh, and of course, on our... Uh, web page, we have to actually add this class, the the uh, text wrap class here too. So I'm going to go to my image here and just add an attribute here, class equals quotation mark, uh, or no quotation mark, um, text wrap. And wait a minute, uh, I just noticed I uh, caught a mistake here. These should be in quotation marks here and here. And let's add quotation marks to the text wrap as well. Almost missed that. So we avoid problems. Okay, so I've saved that. Let's see if it worked. Now you can see my dog is to the right. So that's the basics of creating a web page. Now the only thing I have left to do is add the class that we use for navbar to the other pages as well. So if I just go to diet here, and under diet, we're going to add the navbar class there, there, and there. And there's no images for these ones, so we don't have to worry about it. Just save them all. And now they all will have that updated look. So congratulations, you just made a uh, website. In the next lesson, I'll see if I can create some content for us to uh, work with JavaScript. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good time and we'll see you on the next lesson.